quick introductions, <laughs> something I always seem to gloss over. I do always forget that part. My name is Paul Burgess, and I'm the Director of International Admission at Tulane University. Good morning, everyone. My name is Kristen Pantevis, and I'm a Senior Assistant Director of Admission at the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. And to bring a counselor's perspective to this um, group, my name is Anna Sattler, and I'm in my second year at the American Embassy School here in New Delhi. And my name is Daryl Tynan from Northeastern University in Boston. Wonderful. So um, you're going to be able to gain perspective from all three universities as well as that of a high school counselor on what makes applicants competitive to U.S. universities. We're actually going to be able to go through three real applications from international students um, who have applied to the U.S via the common application. So each of us is going to be able to walk through a little bit of information about an application, what makes a student strong, and what sometimes demonstrates a little bit of weakness. But before we all do take on the persona of a true admission committee, where yes, your votes will count in terms of the final decision on admitting students, we just want to set the stage a little bit on what it's like to be an applicant to a highly selective institution in the United States. So when we're talking about highly selective universities, that means that we're looking at more than just numbers. So more than grades as well as test scores. It means we're also looking at other aspects of an application. Things like letters of recommendation, activities, interest in the university, interviews, potential things like that. Um, and the real reason that as a university we are looking at those things is because we have more qualified applicants than we actually do room at our universities. I'll give you some stats uh, basic for Tulane and these ratios really do hold valid pretty close for all of our universities. We had about 36,000 applications total last year. We have a first year class of 1,700 students so there's a pretty big gap between 36,000 and 1,700, right? But not all applicants would be able to find academic success at our institutions. It's about half of the applicants that could, though. So that's about 18,000 applicants that would be academically successful at our institutions and are essentially qualified to attend. Of course, we'll make more offers of admission than we actually have space for because not every student says yes. So we'll give about six to 7,000 offers of admission. We still have to get down from 18,000 academically qualified students to six or 7,000. So how we do that uh, really is based on the other aspects of a student's application. They're more personal attributes as well as their experiences. It's also important when we're talking to students, we let them know it's about you, but it's not about you, is what we often like to say. Meaning that the application is personal. It's about you as a person as well as your academics, but the decision isn't always about you or a judgment of a student's character. There are institutional goals and needs that all of our universities have that go far above our heads and certainly far above the students themselves. So meaning that if a student isn't admitted, it might not be because they're not academically qualified or we don't think that they would be a good personality on campus. It's things like we may have added a new program in a specific discipline and we want students from that exact major. Or there's a new athletic team. Or, like all of our universities, we have specific initiatives to recruit more students from India. That's why we're here today. That bodes well for many of your students, but it doesn't necessarily bode as well for students from the other countries all around the world. So those sort of goals come in here as well. Um, and just to reiterate, holistic review, the whole picture, which yes, does mean the qualitative, so the personal aspects of a student, and the quantitative, the numbers, things like that, but also all of the context that surrounds it. So a student's maybe illnesses that they've gone through, transferring from one curriculum to another, or moving from one city or one country to another, all of that context comes into our review. Okay, I'm going to talk about the thing that most of you understand very well, and that many students and especially parents are thinking about all the time the quantitative aspect of that application. The thing that so many students and parents think is the most important part. It's the first hurdle of an application. Uh, it's not the complete race. 
Uh, but we do look at, in all of our universities, we're looking at those uh, standardized test scores. Um, the, this helps us to understand and standardize the students who are applying, both the ACT and the SAT. Transcripts are incredibly important as well, though. Looking at, uh, it is a philosophy in the United States that looking at a student's uh, progress over a number of years will help to predict uh, success in the long term. And that's what the evidence has shown within the US ed education system. So we're looking at class 9 and 10 and 11 and whatever of 12th we can get at the time of the application. We're looking at both exams and in-class work which means that if all of your uh, teachers are grading very, very hard and very down, we need to know that. If they're very easy on their students and everyone's getting an A, well, we'll see that. And then which courses they're taking. Are they in the commerce track or the uh, science track? Or are, which uh, curriculum are they doing of the myriad curriculums that are available? We're looking at those and making an evaluation, but we're looking at the grades that they're getting specifically. If your school ranks, we look at those. Uh, for example, at Northeastern University, we have a priority to try and admit and uh, enroll students from the top 10% of any class. Um, and then finance, finance certification. Uh, many universities don't get a lot, give a lot of aid, uh, so we need to know that students can be successful financially as well, because if a student comes in and the pressure is on them from family, from community, and they don't necessarily have the funds to support themselves, that can cause added stress um, and mean that uh, success is harder to come by. And now I'm going to talk about the qualitative part of the application um, that's very typical for a lot of U.S. universities. Um, as Paul was stating, all of these universities receive many, many applications. Um, and um, as Daryl pointed out, the grades are the first hurdle. But after that, when you're thinking about your students and knowing that they are a great student and they have those grades and they have those test scores, the reality is, is they're up against many other students who are in that same category. So it's in these areas where students have the opportunity to stand out and demonstrate why they should, um, why they want to go to the school, why they're a good fit for the school, and there are several ways that they're able to do this. First um, is through the personal essay. Sorry. Um, here is where students can tell a story, and for many, many universities, it's not necessarily what the conclusion of the story is, or, or of course they want to see a great writing sample, but they want to know who the student is. Who are your students? These are people reading your applications and they're interested in getting to know who they are. So through the essay is how they're going to be able to, to paint a picture that's going to make them stand out against all the other students that have those great test grades. Um, and at the end, the admissions counselors can say, wow, I want this student to come to our school. The supplemental essays often include why a student, they're going to ask the question, why do you want to, why do you want to go to Tulane? Why do you want to go to GW? And this is really important as well, because again, now you're able to get into the student and you're going to find out more about them. And I'm, I'm going to point to a place I'm going to just kind of jump over to already, but the fit. And, and that's so key to these admission counselors in finding the right match because they want to give admissions to someone who is going to be successful there. Um, so the supplemental component, they're going to understand why the student is applying. Is it, it's not just one more application and they're just hoping to get in. That's not what they want. They want, they want to see what is it specifically um, is it a specific program? Was it something that they saw watching a YouTube video that really made them want to go to this school, that really made them feel this connection? Um, something on a, I'll say a campus visit, knowing that many students here might not be able to visit, but what is it, to answer that question, why do you want to come, that you're going to be able to put, put in that writing component? 
Recommendations are going to come from counselors. Um, so I'm going to assume everyone here is not from a university but a counselor. Um, and you are going to be able to tell a story about the student outside of the classroom. You're going to be able to talk about, again, why do they stand out? Um, they might have the great grades, but why are they a strong community member? And it, again, it's painting that picture so you can see who they are at your school. What is it that they do um, and why they would be a good match for that specific university. Um, letters of recommendation from teachers. Teachers have the um, great honor of seeing the students every day. I guess at our school every other day. Um, um, and they're the ones really interacting the most. Um, so it's not necessarily just recommending the student and saying that they are good, but why? What is it that they do in the classroom? What's a specific project? Tell a story, um, again, that's going to set them apart and, and show these reps who they are. Um, involvement is important. Every school wants a good community member. So um, sharing what those activities are and what they've learned from them and why they're a better person um, really demonstrates the student's character, their personality. And again, it's going to paint that picture, all of these components, into is this a good fit? Um, and that's what, that's what these guys are looking for in the very end. All right, so with these quantitative and qualitative components in mind, our admissions committees approach this process of deliberation, sitting down, talking together, really figuring out uh, who this student is and who they, we can expect them to be on campus. To give you a sense of how applications are reviewed at highly selective U.S. universities, traditionally there are multiple rounds of review, starting with the territory managers. Here in India, Paul, Daryl, and I are all the first round reviewers for students who are applying from Indian high schools. And so we have an understanding of the high school a student is coming from. We understand the context of the different curriculums, and we really are looking for students to take advantage of what is offered by their schools. Beyond that, traditionally, there is also a second round of review by another reader in our office. And committee comes about uh, when perhaps there might be a disagreement on whether or not we might think a student is a good fit. Let's say after our first round of review, we, we say yes, we, we think this student will be a, a wonderful addition to our institution. Well, if our second reader doesn't agree, that might be when we go to committee to sit down and really hash out the details of a student's application, quantitative and qualitative. To, traditionally, um, you know, the movie Admissions that Tina Fey was in, yes, perhaps we might all be in a room together, but especially as technology has um, adapted and grown, we sometimes will do these committees via Skype or via web conference uh, uh, various web conference platforms and I think what's really great though is being able again to provide our view and really try and look at a student as a person not as a number not as a list of activities and the, the committee process really allows us to do that Every school will have a slightly different process. Holistic review means that we're able to look for, again, the priorities of the institution and the type of student they will be. So what weighs the heaviest will vary depending on the student and what they are offering through that application. This is oftentimes also when we will decide merit scholarships. So particularly for some of our most competitive students might be when we sit down to discuss what level of scholarship we think uh, we should award to that student themselves. So that's kind of the deliberation process in a nutshell, and we're going to shift now. And I'm going to encourage all of you to embrace this idea that you are now a part of our committee for Harvest College. We're going to do a mock application review of several applications, and my colleague Paul is going to come and introduce Harvest College to you all, so you know what we are looking for and what Harvest is looking for. Paul. Thank you so much. So I'm actually going to pull up a college profile 
um, so that you can see specifically what our institution is looking for. The name of our institution is Harvest College, so this is someplace fictitious, but definitely does meet the standards of a highly selective institution. Um, so you can breeze through this and I'll kind of make the key points here. If you remember when we spoke about institutional needs, so the, really the directives that we're getting from our Dean of Admission, kind of characterizing how we should be evaluating applications. That's what comes through here. So it's our job as committee members to advocate for the strengths and weaknesses of each student. So not everyone on the committee will read the file, but it's our job to present all the information there and contextualize it. A bit of information about Harvest, so founded in the 1800s, grew from 200 students to about 2,000 students, so it's a smaller, medium-sized liberal arts school, let's say. Important to know in the bottom of that second paragraph that our acceptance rate is between 20 and 25 percent. So that's highly selective, it means that we're not able to admit about three quarters of the students that apply. And then you're getting some academic information here. So as you remember, Daryl talked about that first hurdle to get over, proving that a student is academically qualified to attend. So 3.7 out of 4.0, a 93 on a 100 point scale. Now don't mistake that 93 um, as that we would be looking for something like that in ISC. We know that the numbers are definitely a little bit different uh, in terms of what makes an A. Again, middle 50% for the ACT, 32 to 34, and a 1460 to 1540. So real top-notch students here. What's important to point out, and just for you to know, for universities that are test optional, meaning that they don't require that score from your students, but maybe they still allow you to send a score. If a student is falling far outside of those ranges, it doesn't mean that they can't get into the university. It just means that they should not send a score if it's outside of that middle 50%. So that's a good barometer to understand what universities are looking for. So here in the third paragraph, we get the very few directives that we actually have from our Dean of Admission. So students are expected to be active in the learning process. So that tells us, it gives us some context for what to look for in an application. A student who participates, speaks their mind. So they balance hard work, fun, and being involved in the community. Okay, so Harvest College isn't where, you know, total library students really excel. They have to be involved in other things. Harvest looks a lot at leadership, depth of involvement, dedication to passions, and examples of strong character. So dedication to passions, plural, so a student at least has to have one passion to begin with, hopefully not just meandering uh, around without much idea of what they like or what they want to do. Um, another just few notes of context, we recently updated our engineering faculty um, and we've had a large jump in applications. So that's uh, what we have most of the profile. Just to scroll down to that next page, this is a rubric that we're going to use later on and this will give you some idea of the key points to pull out when you're looking at those applications. So things in academics, extracurriculars, their personal aspects, and then to sum it all up, overall fit. Um, so we're going to look, consider admit, denying, or waitlisting these students. So at that, we are going to move on to our first application. All right, just had to scroll back up with the PDF. So what we're going to do next, we are actually going to walk through two different applications and I'm going to use my lens as a first round reader to get a sense for this particular student. I'll be providing some insight into what I, I'm seeing in the application, not just reading it out to you all, but again, adding in some of the, my own experience in reading applications and uh, helping us understand the context of what we're seeing. So this particular student is named Ashe and he is a male. Um, what we've whited out here, we'll just go ahead and say that the student is studying in a boarding school in Great Britain. Um, but he is an Indian national, a citizen of India, um, but currently studying abroad. Um, other things for us to note as we're scrolling on through. Um, so 
Both of the parents married and both have attended university. As an applications reader, one thing that we do look for is whether or not a student's parents have attended college or university. If a student's parent has not graduated with that bachelor's degree, we consider them a first generation student, so the first student in their family to be attending college. In this case, for Ashe, his both of his parents have attended college, so we know he does not fall into that category. We also see that he does have a sibling who is attending university in Canada. Next up, a little bit of an introduction to the school itself. Again, a boarding school in Great Britain, and he doesn't have a rank, but we can see what he is currently enrolled in in his A-level courses in, at his boarding school. A little bit of an untraditional mix here. You'll note A-level in mathematics, religious studies, and French. From my perspective, not necessarily the, the mix I might expect to see from a student who uh, is pursuing A-level, so that's, that's a little bit of a dynamic piece there. We'll also note the honors that he has listed. Uh, students have, I believe, up to five slots that they can fill with honors. For Ashe, he's got three that he felt were notable. He's the prefect at his school and was selected by the housemaster for that honor. He also was uh, the school chair for Model United Nations, always loved to see that leadership, and has mentored other students too. So some good noting things to note. Next up, extracurriculars. We know from looking at the harvest college profile, that involvement outside of the classroom is important. So I'm going to cast a critical eye on this and make sure that Ashe is not just involved in a good number of activities, but also has a depth of commitment that shows that he's passionate about what he's doing. So we see that Ashe, as already has been noted, chair of Model United Nations and has done that for three years. So some consistent involvement in that particular uh, activity, uh, especially because we know Model United Nations allow students to interact with uh, you know, fellow students from around the world, good to know he's had some neat experiences there. Also appears to be an athlete, passionate about both soccer and tennis, and has played again in those sports for a number of years, four years for soccer and two years for tennis. He again notes his involvement in the uh, essentially being a prefect for his boarding school and selected by that house ma master as a senior representative, some good leadership there that indicates that he's seen as a role model potentially for his fellow classmates. We'll note his involvement in jun junior ROTC, the co combined cadet forces. And again, we see another leadership piece. He was a sergeant involved for two years in that. Um, we know ROTC and, and pretty much any uh, cadet force is pretty intensive. Uh, I think that speaks both to his athletic prowess, but also again some good leadership represented there. Moving on into some com community service initiatives, we'll note there are three different community service pieces that he puts down. One, vo volunteering as a local gardener or as a gardener at a local el for a local elderly citizen. Now, when I read this, I do think to myself, okay, he's being a good neighbor. That's great. I'm glad to see that. Um, but sometimes you also say, does that count as an activity if you're helping your neighbor with their gardening? Something that I might approach that with. Still very glad that he is thinking beyond himself about the community around him. Well, also exciting for community service, he helped organize that charity color run and did raise a significant amount of money uh, to send to Uganda. Also participated in some charity swim-a-thons and then um, ending things out, he talks about some of his foreign experiences. Now we know he's studying in Great Britain, but did participate in a foreign exchange program in Germany, excellent. And then he does note his family international travel. There's two different ways to view this last activity. There is the sense of, okay, so your family gets to go to a lot of neat places, wonderful, really expanding your lens of the world around you, experiencing lots of different cultures. But on the flip side of that, there are also a question of, does this count as an activity if you're going on vacation with your family? Uh, so we have to keep in mind both of those pieces when we're considering Ashe later on. All right. Now we are on to the very, very, very long essay, which I am going to summarize for you all because it is definitely beyond the 650 word limit that the Common App puts on the essay component itself. If you look at my copy up here, you will note that it is two full pages, single spaced, plus an additional paragraph 
So again, a little bit much for us to go through um, completely, but just to summarize for you, Ashe talks about participating and, and going to um, volunteer with a local NGO here in India. Um, was serving as a mentor for two or three or three or four different students, helping them with um, leadership skills and time management, social skills, and trying to ensure that he's providing a, a good role model for these students. He goes on to discuss the fact that there was one day where he had put a lot of work into developing a curriculum for his students and they were distracted. They weren't paying attention and he tried to engage with them by asking them personal questions, getting a sense for how they were doing and how their families were doing, to which one of the students responded that they hadn't eaten in three days. Now, for Ashe, this was a shocking moment. He did not anticipate that the students would respond in that way. And so from there, he went to go get them some food and started reaching out um, to a local grocery store so that these students could have access to go get healthy food. Um, and Continuing on in this uh, uh, essay goes on to say that um, he then was reaching out to get funding for students and trying to make sure that this curriculum would um, thus expand to make sure that students were being taken care of. He ends the essay by talking about how he's worried the nonprofit won't be able to uh, continue to support these students without the initiatives that he himself are putting, is putting into place. So the essay overall, pretty long and perhaps not as grammatically sound as I would have hoped. Um, it kind of floats back and forth between a lot of different areas and could have been, I think, much more concise and presented the information, uh, the same information. Additionally, one thing I noted when I read through this, he is a little bit full of himself. He does believe that he is the one-stop shop for solving all of these students' problems. Not to say that's a bad thing. I love it when students are engaged with service, but I also want to see a student who is aware that they are part of a solution, not perhaps the only solution. Moving on, we're actually going to go to the transcript, swift, switching into the quantitative side of things. And I'm going to scroll down to the bottom to start with his freshman year grades. So, yes. Yes. So first question, uh, just to repeat for those of you who may, may not have heard, was a question of do we get these essays just from India or from all over the world? I will tell you, no matter where a student is coming from, we will probably get a good number of essays on community service. It's, I think, a really powerful experience for students to engage in that. Oftentimes, um, really forces a student to look beyond themselves and their own experiences. I don't mean on community service. I mean uh, the sky where it uh, looks like there's God's gift. <laughs> yeah, yes, we do get a lot of those too, but I also have seen really delightful community service essays that, that can frame this in a slightly different way. So that's the answer to that first question. For the second question, I think um, what ended up happening here is Ashe turned this a little bit more into a diary entry and a little bit less of, of an, ex, uh, an explanation of one experience. Um, I always encourage students to try not to do too much. You only have 650 words and we read a lot of essays, so we don't necessarily need a student to tell us things. We would love them to show us things. Um, so I don't need a student to say I'm hardworking, I'm dedicated, I care about my community. I can pull that out right exactly. Um, so it's the way you frame that story. But moving on, just because I know that we, in the interest of time, I, I always talk too much, so I've got to go a little bit faster. Um, but to talk about the academic piece, which is a core component. We know Harvest College are looking for students who are quite strong in the classroom. Um, and I typically will start in that freshman year so I can see how the student has developed over their four years in high school. We notice that this is a student who's in the national curriculum here in India, and a student who's done pretty well uh, in their core courses, a good mix of of A's and B's overall. So this is the fun thing. He was, he is currently in boarding school in Great Britain, but in fact, it appears that he moved from India to Great Britain at the end of his sophomore year. So after he took those exams, then ended up moving to Great Britain. 
So we're, he's starting out here in India, again, a mix of A's and B's in that freshman year in his core courses. Now moving on to uh, his sophomore year, we'll note that we're seeing a little more B's in those core courses than A's. Um, so a student who, again, is doing pretty well, um, but a slight downward trend here. Now after completing the examinations at the end of sophomore year, he switched to this boarding school. So a transition point, something I always note, that's a pretty big move to make to go from India to Great Britain. So I'm not necessarily as concerned about his junior year grades. Yes, I would like to see them higher, but remember, he's in that transition point itself. Um, so in his AS level courses, he's history, mathematics, religious studies, and French, three Bs and one C. Don't necessarily like to see that. And then we have predicted A level results, but as a university, we don't actually look at predicted results because they aren't final examination scores. So Although it perhaps provides us with a frame, we actually won't consider those in the review. So unfortunately, we note a downward trend academically for Ashe. Um, again, unfortunate, but something that's important to keep in mind. In terms of overall test scores, um, again, the middle 50%, I believe, for Harvest College was 1460 to 1540. Ashe is below that. Um, Ashe's overall test score uh, for the SAT is a 1360 super score, so combining his best critical reading and math score. Unfortunately, about 100 points below that middle 50%. To wrap things up, to talk about his letters of recommendation, his counselor recommendation actually provides us with some really great additional insight insight. He's described as mature, um, as someone who um, you feel like is, has a special gift, is adaptable, has poise, but the counselor also notes towards the bottom of this letter that not only did Ashe move to Great Britain, but he also had appendicitis during his junior year and is currently fighting dengue. He has dengue fever in his senior year. So Ashe has also been encountering some significant health problems in his transition to Great Britain. Uh, to kind of wrap things up for that counselor review, uh, she does talk a little bit about his nonprofit work, which is always reassuring to see that that is an important part of his life. The last letter of recommendation is perhaps my favorite, though, because it comes from his French teacher. And if you think back to his transcript, Ashe had a C in his AS level class in French, so the course that he struggled the most with. But it turns out that his French teacher tells us that Ashe thought about quitting French, was really struggling with the class, but decided to stick with it and challenge himself, would come to her, seek out help, um, and otherwise really engage with that curriculum. Now, even though his final grade was a C, he still is the, uh, was able to bring his grades up in his examinations in the class. So it tells us that Ashe is someone who's not afraid of a challenge, although again, we would have liked to see perhaps a little bit of a stronger overall academic piece. So that's Ashe. I know I want to give give uh, Daryl some time to talk through our next applicant, Josh. We'll present both Josh and Ashe in just a few minutes in the committee process. Okay, so now you're starting to get a sense of what we're looking at when we're looking at an application. Um, to a certain, I mean, we read so many of these, we get faster and faster at them, and pulling out this information can become more become easier. So we're trying to be a little slower here, but in the, the uh, interest of time, I may have to rush through a little bit. Uh, forgive me. We're going to look at Josh. This is our second person. So Josh is a male. He's Asian. He's from China. Um, and he is... Do you mind scrolling through for me? Because I have a... I tend to be a little bit Italian sometimes, even though I've got no Italian blood in me. Um, so I like to use my hands. Uh, so his birthplace is China, he's coming from China, um, his first language is Chinese, his English is, uh, to, he speaks, read and writes English, so we need to make sure that we're looking for a TOEFL and an IELTS as we go through. So if we go onto the second page, you can see that both of his parents are Chinese, uh, business executives, they're graduates of university, although one of them is a graduate from a trade school, so again, not a first generation student. Uh, he is living at school at a boarding school. He's at the Beijing National Day School. Um, now, for those of you who won't know, that's actually a really strong school in, uh, in China. 
So it's something that we want to take note of. He's uh, very good academics there. His current courses, he's doing an international program. So he's got APs uh, and in an American style system in literature, statistics, and computer science. At least that's what he's telling us he's doing this semester. Um, with honors, he's got a few, and they mostly relate to academic honors at school or outside of school. So a science and technology innovation contest, English subject prize, math subject scholarship prize, social study prize. So he's doing well in school according to these honours. If we keep going, we can finally see his, some of his quantitative statistics. SAT. Now, we, the middle 50% is uh, 1460 to 1540. So that's out of 1600, which means we take those first two numbers. So he has a 1510 which is right in the middle of that uh, middle 50%. He's also got a TOEFL here of 109. Uh, looking at the subscores, everything's strong, although his speaking is a little lower. That's not uncommon for a Chinese student. Uh, usually means they can be very successful with a 109. That was the thing we needed to confirm as we went along. We would get official documentation from uh, the TOEFL organization to ensure that that's correct. Moving on to activities. So he starts really well. We've got founder of English debate team at the school. He was one of the founders of that debate team, gave lectures, prepared uh, to take the team to debate uh, all over China. Fantastic. He's a leader in that role. He did that for two years in his last two years for eight weeks a year, three hours a week. These are things uh, that really show that he's engaging with the local community, engaging with his school community. He has also helped to organize a parliamentary debate tournament at the school and has continued doing that um, and is looking to continue doing it. So again, organizational leadership really engaging with the community, um, a dedication to a passion, let's assume, and a strong character is coming through in that. Third one we've got, he was a teacher, he taught English to one class at a primary school in a poor community in Beijing. Okay, that's fantastic, uh, and he did it for two weeks for possibly three or four days a week, and then that's it. There's no more. So depth of involvement is starting to come out as something that may be a concern, even while we've got some really other great uh, attributes. Um, career oriented, he was in, he was a president of an occupational investigation association, whatever that uh, exactly means. They held consulting meetings with graduated alumnus and current students. It's, I don't know what that is. It sounds like they met together and talked about issues in the school. It's fantastic to be a part of these and thinking about them, but he's not really doing a lot per se. And it's four weeks a year for 10 hours a week, just in two years. So again, depth of involvement is slightly missing. Um, he went to a summer academy for students to experience liberal arts. Great, he's really interested in the liberal arts education, that's what we have. He's done Model United Nations and he chaired it, but then he stopped. So why didn't he continue with that? So again, leadership, fantastic. Community involvement, fantastic. Passion, again, a type of debate, fantastic. But where's the depth of involvement? On the next page, he went to Cornell University Summer Debate Camp. Okay, so we're seeing that debate thing come up again and again, and he won the championship there. So he's very interested in that, and he's obviously got a lot of talent and passion in, re in relation to that. And remember, we're interested in students with passion. Uh, community service, he's done a little bit more. This time, he's helping old aid pensioners for a full three years. It's only three weeks a year that he's doing this. So again, it's not constant or consistent, but at least he's done it for full three, week, uh, full three years. Um, he was on the student union for one year. Uh, why did he end in grade 10? I wonder. Let's find out in a little bit. And he is, he's done some Research, investigated synthesizing fluorescent mat fluorescence material. I don't know what that means because I'm not a chemist, but that sounds really interesting. That's something we want to get confirmation of in those recommendations so we know it's not made up. Okay, personal essay. I'm going to have to skip through this a little bit, uh, but again, he talks a lot about uh, debate. His school was awarded a... a um, the first school to take a boldly liberal approach. It was considered one of the best schools in the nation. The Department of, the Department of Education came out. Um, and then there was some criticism of his school by outside people. And everyone in the school just simply jumped up and defended it without thinking. And he's talking about the process of, well, wait a minute, let's look at this and let's understand this a little better. Let's not just automatically assume that any criticism is bad. As part of that, he started pushing it back against his, his fellow students, but he wanted to remind fervent soldiers, 
nicer use of um, a metaphor, that possibly our school, that we needed to be self-critical. Criticisms could not define be, uh, the school. They could help us improve. So the concept of critical thinking is coming into that. As part of his debate tournament, he uh, proposed a motion that they regret the reforms that led to national prominence, which is a fascinating idea. Remember how hierarchical China is and you're pushing back against the idea of what the hierarchy did was a good thing. In a debate, sure, it's small fry, it's a small little thing within the school, but at the school allowing conversation like that, that is critical of the hierarchy in China, that's pretty decent, that's pretty good. And it's again, it's about his passion. So he went through, they won the debate, um, oh, the teacher actually said it's a risky motion, um, and in the end he said, we won the debate, but I wasn't trying to say my school was bad, what I was trying to say is we need to think uh, and be critical in our thinking. All of those are great attributes for a liberal arts uh, university in the United States. Let's keep moving, because we've got to keep moving. Ah, it's not working. Here we go. Oh. I, I need it. I don't want to sign in. <laughs> no, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, no interruption to his um, education. Uh, we're actually going to skip through this because we don't have it in the other files, but that's the, co the counselling um, document. It also confirms that his GPA is a 4.07 on a 4 scale, so he's very strong in his academics. Uh, current courses, we, uh, this is confirming what we already know. Uh, he's confirming what he said in terms of his current courses. This is his transcript. So this is his Chinese grade 9. Um, a basic uh, curriculum that everyone needs to do all of these. It's out of 100 here and for the more strong, the stronger subjects it's out of 120. Uh, I know that seems like a strange idea to you, welcome to weird curriculums. Uh, but he's getting really strong grades, they're basically A's in everything. These are his grade 10 and grade 11. We don't have grade 12, obviously. But it's hard to see, but if I could do this, uh, that pre-calculus, English honours, um, debate, chemistry, and then if we go over here, we've got AP Calculus BC, AP English and Language, AP Physics C, all very difficult subjects, AP Macro and Microeconomics. So in concert with his AP Literature and his other APs that he's doing this year, he's got a really strong curriculum, and if we go back to those grades, no, no, it's all right, everything is in the 90s. And like in India, a 90, well, in China, is an A. And remember, he's at a strong school, so very strong grades and a pretty good SAT. They're the quantitative aspects. Qualitatively, he's taking very strong subjects as well. If we were to get some AP subject tests, that would be fantastic. Let's keep moving. More, more, more. That's just internal stuff. So this is his... Ah, there we go. Admission colleague, this is his... Uh, no, it's just letter of recommendation. There's some information on the school and then we learn about him from his counsellor. What we're learning here, here is that he's optimistic, responsible, self-motivated, pursuing the most rigorous courses. Obviously the counsellor really likes this guy. Great start to it. Um, in t he's done intensive reading and writing drills didn't beat him. Hard work, the optimistic personality again. Uh, time management, independence, all of these fantastic things. Uh, consistent interest in all of these subjects, economics, math, physics, fantastic. Then we get to the key word, debating. Remember, he's talked about how much he debates. Now we're getting confirmation from the counsellor of who this student is and what he really likes. It's a port and extra activity. He participated in various uh, tournaments. He debated tournaments across, the United, uh, uh, across China and across the United States. Uh, he joined Cornell University. He organised three debate to, um, tournaments, confirming that he really did have that impact in the community. Lots of time and effort on volunteering work, fantastic, and he loves ping pong. Well, what's, what's not to love there? Okay, in the interest of time, I'm going to zip by. This is his teacher recommendation that shows, sorry, if you fill these out, academic achievement, intellectual promise, quality of writing, creative thought, uh, faculty respect, discipline, all of these things, top 5% or top few in the school or in yeah in this class fantastic and again we've got a a recommendation that talks about a cheerful inquisitive and tenacious student um, 
a student who was able to get into really strong subjects because he got grades that other students weren't getting. Although, I have to note that in macroeconomics, 61% of students receive A's. And they said only 61% of students receive A's. Only? China. Shy is a word that no one would ever use to describe Josh. Again confirming, remember we're looking at a university where he's expected to be active in the learning process. All of these things are very positive. Right now he is working on a research paper investigating the role of international aid in development, specifically focusing on the effects of China's trade aid. So he's doing independent research as well. So really good quantitative stats some very good qualitative elements, some weakness in depth of uh, engagement, but overall looking like a pretty good student. Okay. Don't get okay. All right, so now you've You're seen right. how we review an application and how we try and dig through all of the ins and outs of it. We're gonna present as if we're at committee. So you're now gonna transition from seeing how we read to how we condense all of this information into a two minute period <coughs> where we wanna inform our colleagues as to who these students are and why we think they're a great fit for Harvest College. So I'm going to present Ashe, Daryl will present Josh, and we're going to have a vote after that as to whether you think we should waitlist, admit, or deny those two students. So I'm gonna start with Ashe. And imagine, again, we're all sitting in a conference room, you're listening in, learning about Ashe himself. So, Ashe, he is an Indian male, uh, currently studying at a boarding school in Great Britain. In terms of his academics overall, uh, he it was studied in India and was in the national curriculum for his first two years. Um, we saw, uh, let's see, he took nine solid classes, nine solid classes, uh, his freshman year and received five A's and four B's. Uh, his sophomore year, he took seven solid classes, had one A and six B's. He transitioned into um, AS levels and A levels when he moved to his boarding school. In his junior year, he uh, is currently taking, or took four solids and had three B's and one C in that curriculum. Um, he is, again, challenging himself in the rigor of that. His combined SAT uh, super score is a 1360. We do note a downward academic trend overall. Extracurricularly, he's been involved in Model UN for three years, was the chair of that club, soccer for four years, tennis for two years, was selected as the housemaster at his school. He was involved in ROTC for two years, uh, received or was termed as a sergeant. He has done multiple service projects, each for one year. Um, we know oh, less long-term commitments to extracurriculars, but he unfortunately Again, did well, not unfortunately, but transition schools, so that does make sense that he would not be as able to do long term commitments. His personal qualities essay was about a volunteering experience with an NGO, helping students to get food. Overall, grammatically sound, but a bit diary like. Um, does not necessarily mention continuing on with that commu uh, community service work in his extracurricular list. His counselors and teachers describe him as determined, mature, respected, and please note he did experience illnesses in 11th and 12th grade. Uh, so again, health issues there. Overall, I think he would potentially be a very engaged leader, learner. He does seek challenge. His French teacher talked about how he continued on with French even when he struggled. And we do see that he is community minded as well. Great. So we're going to now present Josh as well, but things to keep in mind. You heard that two minute pitch about a student. Everything was relatively positive. So in committee, we have to latch on to what we think is missing there. So rack your brain a little bit as you hear us talk, because we're going to push each of these committee members on what we think is lacking. And our Dean of Admission will come in there as well. Okay. Josh. Josh is a, a, an Asian uh, young man. Um, he is, both his parents are Chinese, so he's, uh, he's a Chinese uh, citizen. He, Chinese is his first language, but he's got a 109 on the TOEFL, so his English is quite strong. He has a 1510 on the SAT, a 4.0 GPA overall. He's doing an international curriculum. He moved from the Chinese curriculum to an AP curriculum, in which he's done uh, multiple uh, APs, including the highest Calc BC, English and Lit, Physics C, Macro Microeconomics. Uh, he's also doubled up on maths now that he's uh, gone further in uh, as far as he can go. He's now doing stats 
and computer science as well and he's doing very well in all of them. His economics teacher talks about how he scored enough to get into one of the top classes. Uh, in, he's at the, um, the Beijing National Day School, which is one of the top schools in China as well, so these grades can be considered very strong. Uh, he is both a founder and organizer of a debate team and a tournament, which has been confirmed by his counselor. He has done multiple community service activities. Uh, he's chaired Model United Nations. He even won a championship of debate in Cornell. So he's got a great passion for debate and has really uh, applied that across a number of different areas. He's also involved, has been involved in independent research in his grade 10 and then pushed that further when he, he's now doing more independent research as confirmed by his counselor. Um, he wrote about pushing back against the hierarchy and, and critical thinking within, the univer uh, within his school, which is a really strong thing for him to be doing within an, a Chinese school. He is described as ambitious and promising, optimistic, responsible, self-motivated by his counselor. And then his uh, teacher talks about an intelligent, cheerful, inquisitive, and tenacious student. So you think that's fast, right? Great. And you've already had the context for reading those students' applications. So now here's what also happens in admission committee. I actually have a third student to present. None of you have read this student before, but by far and away, I think that he is our student to admit. Here's why. Two minutes. Andre from Macedonia. Our class has so many students from China as well as India. We want some difference and some diversity. So Andre from Macedonia is a first generation college student. Neither of his parents has attended university. He spent his first two years acing all of his classes in a small village outside of the capital Skopje. So much to the point that he wanted to attend an IB school. So he moved in with distant relatives in their apartment within the city and received a scholarship to attend an IB school, the preeminent school within this capital city. In his first two years in a village school, aced every course, came immediately into an IB curriculum and still managed to have a large portion of A's with the occasional B. So this student is extremely impressive. Maths HL, English HL, and Macedonian HL as a requirement. We've got activities like a summer program at Johns Hopkins. Not some student that just bought his way into a summer program in Johns Hopkins, as anyone can do, but received a scholarship that covered his cost to attend that program. He is deemed as a leader and is respected by his peers, as noted as his multiple years spent uh, chairing the Model UN office, as well as other student council positions within his school, a true leader, again, respected by his peers. He is an advocate for children. He has studied abroad in other places within the Caucasus region uh, and around Europe. And in his essay, he notes and demonstrates his true commitment to community service, not only a commitment to community service, but a strong writer with good transitions between paragraphs, it demonstrates empathy, and has essentially found a way to create biofuels from leftover agricultural products uh, within his home village. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this student embodies everything that Harvest College is looking for. He's got good grades, 3.75. SAT, composite of a 1460. He is in our range, and not only does he have a strong personality, but his teachers note that while he has strong opinions, he always makes sure that his opinions don't dominate and allows others to contribute. So, Madam Dean, as the Dean of Admissions, I just got a raise, obviously. Um, I think it's really important, before I talk about who is going to gain admissions here, is when we talk about these guys over here as human beings, as readers, um, they're not just admissions representatives. You can feel the excitement from Paul that when he is reading this application, how much enthusiasm he has for this student. And that's because he doesn't just have the same score, like incredible scores that Josh has. Josh has great scores too, but he has something else. And that is where that, um, where that other, the um, qualitative part can come out and where we just encourage you to have that piece come out and paint the picture of who that student is because that is how like an admitted student gets admitted is because of how Paul feels when he's reading that. So very obvious that, um, Andre will gain admissions to Harvard, Harvard University. Hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
And he gets a scholarship. <laughs> Just kidding. Come on, Josh is amazing. Look at those stats. He's engaged in his school. It's leadership. He's pushing back against the very concept of what it is to be a Chinese and doing what he's supposed to do. Excuse he's fantastic. Me. But you know, Ashe has overcome so much. He has been sick. He has pushed through and challenged himself. And ch I'm very concerned. He's had everything put to him on a silver plate. Overcame dengue in the comfort of his family's penthouse in I'm, London. I'm very concerned about the declining grades of Ashe. I don't see... A uh, any kind and okay those predicted to A's but where's that prediction coming from and yes he worked harder at French and then got a C what's going on Josh couldn't be a more dry candidate zero personality in that essay just conforming 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 he's, not con he's, he's <laughs> fighting back against the man <laughs> call it call it they're all fired <laughs> we don't argue there's a, there's a question I see a question let's just talk to you first yes. well this is very fine what happens if a family has lots of uh, students coming? This could be, I mean, you need diversity in your institutions. Now, what happens to the country like ours, which has so many students applying? So they lose out because of uh, diversity. Well, I think, I mean, number one, number two, yeah. I have another query. And here is it, what is it that makes the application pick up and the rest of it down? And there must be somewhere where some applications get lost. Well, there must be some point that some applications will never get picked up. Well, to answer that question, actually, and before we jump into questions, I do want to wrap this up by having us actually vote, all of us, collectively, on these three applications, but with the caveat that that is not actually how we do things in committee. We don't have three side-by-side -side that we compare. We will vote to waitlist, admit, or deny after each application that we review. So it's not as if it's a side-by-side, -side, we only have space for one, we have to choose one of these. Instead, we're making that decision after we committee each application. So in that case, it's not as if we're saying, oh, well, we've, we've got a lot of students from China, so poor Josh. Instead, we'll say, hey, what do we think Josh can bring to our campus across all of the quantitative and qualitative components of that application? So, all right, well, the time has come then for No, exactly. This is all part of what we take into account. But to call it here, we are going to go through each application. Um, and in the interest of just because it's kind of fun to say we can only admit one, we can only waitlist one, and we can have to deny one, because again, remember, Harvest College only admits 20 to 25 percent of students. Let us vote, starting with Ashe. Who would vote? You can only vote to admit one of the three students. You can only vote to waitlist one of the three students. Okay. And everyone must admit. vote. Okay. Who would admit Ashe? Oh. Your fellow country person. <laughs> oh you harsh, terrible people. <laughs> oh, wow. I see two. Who would vote to admit Andre? More. So many to count. <laughs> we're, we're, the, the guy at the back with the sign telling us it's time is also voting for him. Who would vote to admit Josh? Okay. Ooh, and I think Andre has it. So what we're going to do while we wrap up here, we're going to tell you what each of our universities would have done, and then we're going to stay to answer some of your questions before the fair. But anyone who needs to head out, um, we are at time, so please feel free uh, to head out if you need to. Otherwise, we'll stay and take questions. We can do that for a few minutes. Okay, so Northeastern University in Boston. We're highly selective. Um, we do have a lot of Chinese students coming through a lot of pathway programs, so that's a thing for us at the same time we love Indian students um, because there's such diversity and ability within them so that's the numbers are not an issue just to answer your question in terms of these three students if I had to admit uh, or deny each one I'm first looking at Andre obviously he's astounding he's doing things are far beyond what anyone else is doing and he's doing them with fewer resources he's forced his way up simply through sheer talent he is amazing Northeastern would definitely deny him why? He doesn't have any money. We don't give need-based aid. He would not be able to afford it, and if he could scrape together the money, it would be nothing but a stress for him. He would not be a good fit financially. We would more than likely probably uh, admit uh, Josh, simply because he is an unusual Chinese student in that he's 
not just the grades. The grades are fine. Like everyone, in, every man and his dog in China gets strange uh, grades like that. And I know that sounds harsh, but we do get a lot. We get thousands of applications that look like that. The fact that he pushed back against his school, that's what's really interesting. His passion for debate. He really wants to do things with it.